Okay. Today, I'm going to be talking about getting an employer identification number for an estate, a decedent's estate. Uh, we're using a form SS4 issued by the Turtle Revenue Service. And what are we talking about here? Well, when somebody passes away, they may have assets that they own in their name. And then that is what's referred to as an estate. And if they have a trust, that's something else that we're not talking about today. And you're going to, in any estate that has income over $600, you have to do an income tax return for federal and state on uh, IRS Form 1041. So the purpose is to two things. One is to report your taxable income for the estate. I'm assuming you're the executor or administrator. And the other aspect is to be able to open a bank account. The bank account wants to know that the IRS has already issued an ID number so that uh, they can issue 1099s and, and that type of thing. So on the SS4 form, I'm going through the details just for an estate, not for a trust. And uh, I'm going through the paper form. Our office has access. Uh, to, we do these online for clients. Uh, the first line here is name a legal entity. So it will be Joe Decedent it would be the name of it. And then you put the word estate after that. Uh, the left column of address information um, is not needed. Business trade name and uh, name for the corporation, whatever. This form is used for a lot of different entities. So that's why there's conflicting information on it. And we're just gonna focus on the executor or administrator for a decedent's estate. So we put the name of the executor or administrator, uh, the address of the administrator, and then the county and state where their mailing address is. And then we say name responsible party, which would be the person named in the will or the person applying to be executor administrator. And then they would put the executor social security number. Uh, the next line has to do with the limited liability company. We're not doing that. So we skip it, go down to line 9A. And what type of entity is this? Well, we check the box that says, a state, and then they want the social security number of the decedent. Uh, corporation, we're going to skip that line. Uh, we go down to how come you're a reason for applying. And we're going to check the box that say banking purpose for decedent's estate. Then line 11, date the business was started or acquired. Now, I realize we don't have a business here, but we have an estate, and that's what they're referring to. And the date is the date of death for the estate. And then line 12, we have, when is the month of closing for the accounting period? And that is December for uh, tax purposes. Then on line 13, what's the highest number of employees you intend to hire? Well, I don't think any. So under the titles for agriculture, household, and other employees, just put zero. And then the next wants to know when the wages are going to get paid. Well, I put N slash A for not applicable. Then we go down to the best uh, description for the principal activity of your business again. We don't have a business. We check the box that says other and refer them that it's a decedent's estate. Okay, so then it wants to know what's the principal line of merchandise sold or construction work, products produced. There again, uh, it doesn't apply directly, but we enter in here administration of decedent's estate. And has the estate ever applied for an employer identification number before? No. 
And then the next area is a place called third party designee. And that's if you're designating a third party, for example, an uncle or a decedent or whatever, and then their name, uh, which means that they could talk to IRS also. But normally we'll leave that blank. Then you have to sign under penalty of perjury. You uh, type out the name, your name as executor administrator, and uh, you put your name in comma executor, then you sign it, date it. And the next part of this is they want to know your telephone number and area code and the fax number. And that's uh, basically it. It's pretty straightforward. Um, and then you send that into the IRS for uh, to issue the uh, ID number. Ours come back online right away. Uh, it's a two-page reply, and the letter indicates what the new ID number is. And uh, they usually will say that they are expecting a tax return by next April 15th. So this is the information you need to prepare the application for a new employer identification number. And I point out, it's also called a taxpayer identification number, TIN. Uh, I don't know why they always call it EIN, employer identification number, especially when there's no uh, employees. So that's how it is prepared. Good luck.